First up today, a very brief history lesson. Around 30 years ago, Australia started to dismantle the tariff protection which had existed for decades in the footwear, clothing and textile industries. Back then, many large Australian towns had their own spinning mills. The removal of protection led to all but a handful of mills being shut down. Amid all that gloom, one mill in Western Victoria has battled against the cheap imports and actually prospered, now to be the only large-scale Australian mill which spins coloured yarn. The mill's survival is due to the tenacity and foresight of one of the nation's oldest businessmen. The looms of Creswick woolen mills have clattered continuously since 1947. Today it's a very, very difficult business, especially when uh, the government says we can't help you. It's a free competition. New Australian industries have been so buffeted by the cold winds of world trade as textiles. Once, most larger towns had a spinning mill. This is basically in the last uh, five or ten years, I should imagine, to be a woolen mill uh, disappearing every year, or textile manufacturer, or even at greater rates than that. Since the 1970s, tariff protection has been progressively reduced. Now it's virtually nil. More than 50 local mills have closed in recent years, swamped by a tide of cheap imports from low labour cost countries such as China, Pakistan and India. Creswick's survival is due mostly to the mill's founding father, the redoubtable Paul Rizawi. I guess he's the visionary of the business and he, he sees things very, very clearly. Uh, he doesn't necessarily get involved in the detail, uh, I guess, nor should he, but um, he's an inspiration to everyone. How often he's put up, you know, with heartache, with boom and bust, uh, but the, at the end of the day, I think because he's a survivor and he maintained a sustainable business, He's seen competitors that used to look down on him, you know, they were 10 times his size, 20 times his size. Uh, he's seen them all come and go. So it's a, it's a really remarkable story. Even more remarkable when you learn that Paul Rizawi has just turned 93. Yeah. To get out a nice product, you've got to be practically an artist. Of course, now uh, people don't pay attention anymore. Wool or no wool, they are just getting it from China, irrespective of what it is. The price is the greatest decider. In 1939, when the Nazis invaded Poland, the young student fled Warsaw, then evading capture by the Russians, eventually reaching Japan, before joining thousands of other Jewish refugees in Shanghai. His wheeling and dealing gave him enough capital to reach Australia in 1947. He found a sympathetic bank manager, borrowed 25,000 pounds, imported spinning machines and built his mill at Creswick. A year later, he went back to Poland and the unimaginable horror of the Holocaust. My whole family were burned. My whole acquaintances and all my friends, everyone were burned. I just will sleep. He had some harrowing uh, experiences. Never was. Never was. And I think he's always had a business brain as well. So survival as a, you know, a backbone and um, a business brain, you know, that's probably the testament. And if you ask him, um, he'll tell you genetics because he's got a lot of people in his family that have lived, you know, after the age of 100. So uh, he's waiting for the Queen's telegram and... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, God willing, uh, you'll, you'll get it. The mill began making grey woolen blankets and soon added other lines, such as picnic rugs and fabric for fashions. A, a company like Creswick supplied rolls of fabric to Australian manufacturers, so Linda Electric blankets, Givoni dressing gowns, Lena sports coats, you know, they're all relatively famous names that are imported now as, as goods these days as our manufacturers and as our customers, you know, for good reasons, have moved offshore. 
uh, Creswick has had to find a variety of niches. The veteran businessman accepts that reality without a hint of sentimentality. Electric blanket is cheaper to make in China. Let them do electric blanket in China. If the customer is uh, happy with the Chinese electric blanket, and sometimes it might be electrocuted, I don't, I don't care. Creswick is the last woolen mill in Australia which spins coloured yarn and the only one which processes alpaca fleece. Very, very unique. We only know of one other mill outside of South America in Europe uh, that spins the product. The fibre presented a major challenge. You're looking at um, equipment that really hasn't changed since the 1800s, you know, the traditional woolen spinning system. Uh, if I go back three and a half years, we had experts here and the alpaca fibre was falling off the machine and the experts were telling us it couldn't be done. But uh, from our perspective, we don't have a choice. We have to create differentiated products. So everybody who came in from the other mills used to tell us, you'll never do it. You'll never do it. It behaves differently to, uh, to a normal uh, woolen blend. We've made a few differences with the recipe and whatever and the machine and made a lot easier to spin it. And all the time we made it better and better and better and that's how it is now. What we have here is a, one of our newest um, products. It's our alpaca light. In our case, uh, what we've chosen to do is spin 100% alpaca fibre. Um, so from that perspective, it's something unique because most people around the world would only spin 20% alpaca. The alpaca blanket is proving especially popular with the elderly. They don't want a heavy uh, pile pressing on them, um, but at the same time they want something very soft and very warm. As a luxury fibre, alpaca fleece fetches eight times its merino equivalent. Australia's herd now numbers some 70,000. Still not enough to produce large lines of fleece. With past careers in the fashion industry, Benoit and Philippa Ernst saw the marketplace potential of alpaca fibre. They regard Creswick as crucial. To us as breeders, it's a very big advantage because it's also promoting the alpaca. So we're not just showing pretty animals, we're showing quality either garments or, or, or products, uh, which obviously for any new industry, it's very important. In the past 15 years, astute genetic selection has seen the average fleece yield skyrocket. Although the average is still probably three kilos to four kilos, it's a, it's a huge improvement. And we've gone from 36 micron down to now 16 or 14. And so the industry is selecting breeding animals capable of finer micron and greater yield, such as this male fleece of seven kilograms. So to, to go from 500 grams to a kilo, to seven kilos. It's a huge improvement. Um, and I think that's where the future of the industry is. As with wool, a combination of climate, environment, nutrition and genetics all dictate the yield and fineness of an alpaca fleece. But unlike wool, there's an added complication, the diversity of colours. This product here, it's a natural grey and a natural, natural black. The mill spins a mix of micron classes and colours, including a natural colour range. It's very exciting for our industry. I mean, it's very important for our industry because we can't waste our time breeding if nobody's going to use the end product. So, yeah, we, we, we're very excited about the future. The mill's future also seems assured. Seven years ago, 31-year-old Boas Hirschfeld joined his grandfather in the fiercely competitive fickle world of textiles. I worked as a chartered accountant and then he said, no, you shouldn't come in, there's no future in textiles. Well, most people, uh, most people would agree, but um, you know, we're, we're probably both stubborn people and here we are. Some of the looms you'll see today, uh, we only got the orders two weeks ago uh, and they'll be on the shelves in three weeks. So really, from an import competition perspective, we have to be nimble um, high volume products have to be made overseas, it's just a fact of life. But um, niche, high quality, 